So let us consider this function for differentiability. And you can see the function is defined on the entire plane, okay? So now when it comes to the points that are different from zero, zero, uh, instead of using the long definition, let us use a sufficient condition. So here is a sufficient condition that uh, if a function is defined on an open region containing AB and the partial derivatives exist near AB and they are continuous at AB, then the function is differentiable at AB. So let's employ this one. So first let's uh, focus our attention to uh, this portion here, the points that are not at the origin. Okay, and so what we will do is we'll just go ahead and calculate the partial derivat derivatives just by using the, the formula. So what we have is uh, if we got uh, the partial derivative at uh, say, or partial derivative with respect to x, then we are differentiating this product so first I shall differentiate the first factor that will become 2x and then I get what sine of 1 over square root of x square plus y square and then uh, plus I'm going to leave this uh, first factor unaffected now differentiate the second factor now when you differentiate a sine of a quantity, what you would get first is cosine of the quantity, all right? And then times uh, the derivative by chain rule, in this case partial derivative of the quantity. Now remember, th this is one over x squared plus y squared. So what this will be then is if we just change it to power, to the power negative one half, right? So then next, this would be 2x sine uh, one over square root of x square plus y square plus x square, sorry, plus y square. Now, let me just uh, write this on the side here, okay? So here, what I have is that if I write the derivative of this, this will again, by the power rule, would be, I'm differentiating power negative half of a quantity, right? So what will happen is that I shall get x square plus y square negative uh, one half minus one times the partial derivative of the quantity. So y is treated as a constant. So what I get is a two x. And uh, then what happens is uh, these, these guys cancel, right? So what you get then is this for, you know, for this part, is that, and I'm going to write that part here if not too inconvenient, okay? So that is, I get negative, all right, x, and this is x squared plus y squared to the negative three halves. That can be written on the bottom. That is, uh, this becomes what? To the power positive three halves, right? And uh, then I didn't need that much space here, okay? So we have, I shall just put this in a bracket and then I get what? Cosine of one over square root of x square plus y square, right? So this is the partial derivative with respect to what? X, right? And if you want, uh, you can write on this side, 
that the partial derivative uh, with respect to y would be what? To y because x and y are interchangeable cosine of 1 over square root of x square plus y square. Uh, why did I do that? I don't know because this should uh, remain as a sine, right? So let me erase it. I'm sorry about that. Okay. All right. So this was the first factor. So this will stay as sine. And then the other part would be what? Along the same lines, negative y times x square plus y square over x square plus y square to the power 3 over 2 times cosine of 1 over x square plus y square square root of that. Now I could cancel this and make this power one half but let's just hold on to that for a minute. You can see this if as we took here if our x y is uh, not at zero zero then everything looks good all over right. So all the factors are, contin are continuous at x, y when x, y is not 0, 0. So both the partial derivatives are, they exist and they are continuous at every point other than uh, every point that's not at the origin. Okay, so what we conclude is that uh, the function is differentiable, sorry for the handwriting, differentiable when x, y is not equal to 0, 0, okay? Uh, now we would like to check the differentiability at the point 0, 0. So first of all, uh, you can see that this doesn't even apply here because uh, you can see that these partial derivatives, they are not continuous at zero, zero. Let me just show that to you first, okay? So let me erase all this, okay? So here we are, okay? That is, so what we want to see is, and I did a, something that uh, I shouldn't have, that is I, it is the simplified expression for this. So let me bring it back for you in no time. So what uh, we want to see is that uh, this, uh, you know, that these partial derivatives, they are not continuous at zero, zero. Okay, but before, before checking for the continuity, we have to look at whether they exist at zero, zero or they don't. So if you recall, say I want to, check whether uh, df dx is available at 0, 0, what I would do is that I shall calculate this limit as h goes to 0 of f h 0 minus f 0, 0 divided by h which will be limit as h goes to 0. Remember that's how we computed the partial derivative from definition. So h0 and we are assuming that h0 is different from 0, 0 at this moment. So we will have h square times sine of 1 over y is 0 and we are uh, treating h to be non-zero. So we can like write absolute value of h and f0, 0 is zero. So that divided by h. So what that becomes is that limit a as h goes to zero, h, h is square sine of one over absolute value of h divided by h. And this would be, h goes to 0 and uh, actually so this h will cancel this square here so we have h sine 
1 over absolute value of h and this value is uh, 0 by the squeeze theorem and along the same lines you can get uh, that uh, uh, sorry what for that is scribble that uh, df dy at 0 0 is 0 as well okay so both the partial derivatives they exist at 0 0 now what we want to see is that they are not continuous at 0 0 okay so let me do this here let me erase this okay now that we know that they do exist at 0 0 so now here is df dx when x y is not 0 0 and if you did this that is simply approached 0 0 okay from the x-axis all right or say from the positive x-axis so if you did that what will happen is that this portion will become uh, 2x sine and here we y is 0 and x is positive so this will be simply 1 over x minus uh, x over x on the same reason that y is 0 and that will be 0 then a square root of x is square that is x and this is going to be cosine of x all right so you have 2x sine 1 over x minus cosine of 1 over x right so what happens here is that uh, this will go to 0 by squeeze theorem but remember this this does not have any limit as uh, x goes to 0 because uh, it will just go you know it'll just uh, oscillate between negative 1 and 1 so the limit of df over dx as x y go to 0 0 or let me write it down for you that this uh, limit does not exist all right so since the limit does not exist this uh, partial derivative is not continuous at 0 0 all right okay now we want to see whether f is differentiable at 0 0 okay so now we are going to prove uh, that uh, or check that rather that this function here is differentiable at 0 0 okay so and we saw this that the partial derivatives of this function they are not continuous at 0 0 okay so here uh, we got this that is the 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 partial derivatives they exist at 0 0 we just saw that right and is the same at df dy okay and now we want to see if they are differentiable so we will just go and we will go back to our original definition that was this that they should exist and this limit should be equal to zero okay so let's look at the limit for uh, for at zero zero so what we have is that uh, limit x y goes to 0 0 all right and here what I have x square plus uh, y square sine of 1 over square root of x square plus y square and fab is 0 and uh, then f this quantity is 0 so all these quantities are 0 and what we have downstairs is AB is 0 so that would be square root of X square plus Y square so what we get this as uh, this simply becomes that uh, this will simply become 
x y goes to 0 0 x square plus y square and see all these are gone so this, I'll simply get a square root of x square plus y square now you can change to polars if you want or can see that by squeeze theorem this limit is zero okay so what you saw is that this function that you have here is a differentiable function everywhere okay all right uh, even though it's partial derivatives they are not continuous at zero zero still the function is differentiable everywhere okay